Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to talk about and explore tips for adding comments and documentation to your SwiftUI app. So when working on your SwiftUI projects sometimes other people may join your team or if you're working on your own projects you may just forget what you've done in the past you know this is normal it happens to all of us so this is why documentation um, and adding comments can be useful to us as developers so let's look at our project here, which is our startup project. And how can we actually make this better? What if we wanted to, we could actually create sections and almost like bookmarks for our properties, constants, and our source of truth. So in order to do this, what we need to do is actually add a comment to our SwiftUI file. And we can accomplish this by using the mark comment, which creates a bookmark within our code that we can easily access. But before we do that, what are comments? So comments in programming is a readable annotation within the source code. So let's add our first comment in and we'll mark our model within this file. So the first thing to do is use two forward slashes and then the keyword mark and then use a colon. And then followed by that, you wanna use a dash and then give it a name. So in our case, the name we're going to give it is models. So now you'll notice that by us using our mark, we actually have this line here at the top, which is almost like our separator. And also as well, if we go into our project's breadcrumbs at the top here, you'll notice that we actually have a new icon here called models. So this is our almost like our bookmark of where we're placing our models. So let's actually add a few more marks into our projects to see this in action. So now that we've added in all our marks, if we go back to our programs, you can actually see all of the almost bookmarks that we've added within our file. And if we wanted to, we could easily jump between them. So if I were to go to the source of truth for this main view, it takes me there because we have our bookmark marked. <laughs> So one thing to note is that you only really want to use mark when it's necessary. So the rule I tend to follow is if I feel like I want to easily jump to a new section, like I just showed you then, within a source file, you know, in that example, then I'll add in a mark. You don't want to just add loads of marks everywhere when they're not necessary. You only want to add it to places where you may need to jump to key bits within your source code. Sometimes you may also want to explain the purpose of some of the code that we have within our code base that isn't very clear. So this is where you can actually use more general comments. Now the rule of thumb that I generally tend to follow is that if the code isn't already clear, if there's something that I feel that the developer should be aware of, when reading this code or if I'm making a change to, or if there's some handy information such as a blog post to resolve an issue, then I'll add in a comment. So when adding in comments, you have two types. So you have single and multi-line comments. And what we're going to do is actually add in a single comment. And this is very similar to our mark that we added in before. So for our fake data, let's add in a comment above it explaining what it is similar to our mark, we'll add in two forward slashes and then explain its purpose. So let's go up here. And then on our fake data, just below here, we'll just add in two forward slashes and then we'll just say what this is. So now we have our comment in. And if you notice in the project, we actually already have examples of us adding in single line comments. So someone can just quickly distinguish you know what the purpose of this computer property is or if we wanted to we can actually also use a shortcut to actually create single line comments as well so in order to do this on your mac if you just hold down the keyboard and forward slash you'll see that it actually automatically generates comments for us so we can start typing and alternatively as well if we wanted to take off a comment then if we just do the same command again whilst we're on a comment it will actually remove that comment for us as well so those are some hot keys for adding in single line comments so sometimes you may also want to write comments on more than one line and we can actually accomplish this by using multi-line comments so let's add this in above our enum to explain it in more detail so in order to use a multi-line comment you want to use a forward slash and then an asterisk and then after that add another asterisk followed by a backslash so let's go above our enum and do that now. Now, if you hit enter, you can now go onto multiple lines and you can add in your, you know, multi-line comment. So I'm just gonna type this in now to show you what it looks like. 
So now we actually have our multi-line comment and it explains the purpose of what our enum is. So we've looked at how we can add in comments and to add more clarity to our code. But what about if we want to add more information to our actual functions and properties to get clearer you know, information on what they do and what they are? Well, let's go into our view model and we have a function here called set. So this function right here. But what does this set function actually do? Let's add in some documentation to explain more about what this function's purpose is. But rather than typing this out manually, we're going to use a shortcut in Xcode to help give us the template for adding documentation to our function. So in order to do this, you just need to hold down command on your keyboard and then click on it. So you should see it highlighted. And if you click on it, you should see then an option called add documentation like so. And this will actually generate some comments and we can fill out the highlighted areas to explain what this function does. So what I'm going to do is actually fill this out and then we'll break it down. So what I've done is I've basically specified a description of what this function is. And then we have our parameter automatically generated for us. So now our item, we can actually explain what this purpose of this parameter is and what you should pass in. And because we've added in this, if we wanted to now, we can actually see what this function does by using the option keyboard and then selecting it with a question mark. And now we get a description from Xcode telling us the purpose and giving us some documentation for this function. And if we actually had the function selected with our cursor and we go to the right hand panel here and we go to the information tab, you'll see that we also get information telling us about what this function is and also explaining the parameters as well. And if you want to learn more about Xcode, you can check out my video, Getting Started with Xcode in SwiftUI. Also, we can apply the same thing to properties if we wanted to by using the same command click option. So let's apply this to our active. So we just hold down the command key on your keyboard and then click on active. And you'll see the option here to add documentation. Just click on that. And then now we get the description. So one thing to notice here is that if you want to add in documentation, rather than you adding in two forward slashes for a comment, um, or a mark, you actually have to add in three for it to pick up that is documentation, as you can see here. So now we can explain the purpose of this property. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So now if we hold down the option key, you'll see that we get our documentation. So we've looked at an example of where we set a parameter, but what about if we have a function that returns a value? So let's just create some dummy function inside of here that you know has no purpose just for this um, example that I want to go through. So how will we actually document a function like this? So we saw how we can handle parameters, but we've not saw how we can actually handle returning. And also if we had, let's say more than one parameter. If we just hold down command on our keyboard and then click on this and then hit add documentation, you'll now notice that our comments are a bit different. So you can see here that when we're specifying the parameter before, cause we only had one, it was on one line. But in this example, because we now have two, you can see that we've almost got like a indented list within our parameters. So we can add in documentation for each parameter. And we also have this new comment here called returns where we can specify what our function returns. So let's just fill this out. So as you can see here, we've just filled out our information. And if we just hold down the option key, and got some documentation, you can see how it lays it out where it specifies our parameter and this time also tells us our return value. So that's everything in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well as hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.